I have been talking through the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. And on this video, we have worked our way up to the Magnificat of Mary. We have seen in previous videos, uh, we started out with Luke explaining how he does his research in chapter one, verses one to four. This is followed then by the genealogy. We looked at the genealogy of Matthew, no doubt looking at Jesus' legal right to the throne of David. And then we saw in Luke how Jesus is the son of man, the second Adam, going back to the very beginning, back to Adam. So these two genealogies complement one another. Jesus is fully fulfilling the covenant that David would, that one would reign on David's throne forever. That is found in Matthew. But then we also have in Luke, one who is fully man and fully God in John. So we have the God man <coughs> uh, prophesied in these early gospel accounts. We then moved to the Annunciation of the birth of John the Baptist to Zacharias. <coughs> we talked about how Zacharias means uh, the Lord has remembered. And certainly he remembered his covenant in giving birth to uh, John the Baptist when they were beyond being able to have children. And Elizabeth means my God has sworn. Following this, Zacharias is not able to speak because <coughs> he did not believe in such a miracle. And later on, he will speak at the birth of John. This is followed by the Annunciation then uh, to the Virgin Mary of the birth of our Lord. And Mary is told that she uh, is highly favored, not that she is an object, not that she is to be worshiped, but that she is highly favored to be able to uh, have, uh, give birth to the Messiah. And we're told how that the Holy Spirit would come and would overshadow Mary. And so that which is born of her is a supernatural miracle in the divine virgin birth. Prophesied that he would be great and the Lord would give him the throne of his father David forever a fulfillment of 2 Samuel 7 and also Isaiah 9. Then we had the song of Elizabeth as she met Mary when Mary went to see her. And there is a wonderful blessing uh, that she says, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Uh, because uh, you're my, the mother of my Lord has come to me and the baby leaped in the womb. That is John the Baptist leaped in the womb. And we talked about uh, Ta Brephos, the child, and how that Greek word is also applied when the Magi go to visit Ta Brephos, the child. So the child in the womb and the child outside of the womb are the same. They're both a human being. Again, showing the sanctity of life. And we talked about that from conception to the very end of life. And the important thing we see here is that the Lord is orchestrating these births supernaturally. And now we come to the Magnificat of Mary, where Mary is going to magnify the Lord and what the Lord has done. And by the way, we get the name Magnificat from the Latin, because in the Latin Vulgate, it reads Magnificat, uh, my soul magnifies the Lord. And this is where we get the title Magnificat. It's a verb in Latin, and it's looking at Mary uh, magnifying the Lord. So let me just read 
that wonderful uh, piece in Luke 1, 46 to 56, where Mary then will magnify the Lord in a wonderful, wonderful way. So as we read this, notice uh, it reads as follows. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in the God, my savior. And all the way through here, there's going to be referencing to the Hebrew scriptures. First Samuel 2, we think of Hannah's, uh, the magnification that took place by Hannah in the birth of Samuel. And we're having then a repeat of that miraculously. And he has regarded the lowly state of his maid servant. By the way, uh, notice uh, my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. This goes back in language to Habakkuk 3.18. And so we move on. He has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. And behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. This is a quote or a reference back to Psalm chapter 138, verse 6. So all generations would cause would call her blessed. And then we move on. Uh, on it says, for he uh, has done mighty, uh, has done in a mighty full, mighty works to me by doing great things. And uh, his whole his name is holy, or holy is his name. And his mercy is unto generations and generations on them that fear him. Here we have another reference back to Psalm 103, verse 17. So we're moving from Hannah's song in 2 Samuel 2, 1 to 10, on into the Psalms. And Mary had a great grasp of the Psalms, it appears for sure. He has showed strength with his arm. The arm is the symbol of salvation in the Hebrew scriptures. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their heart. Again, a reference back to Psalm 89, verse 10. So the proud are going to be scattered. He has put down princes from their thrones and has exalted them of low degree. Again, there's a reference to Job 5.11 and Job 12.19. And so, by the way, this is spoken of in the past, but I believe it's looking at the future, what we might call a prophetic perfect in Hebrew. We're looking at what God is going to do, and it's as good as done, so to speak. And I think when I was uh, a boy in uh, young, younger, my pastor one time was telling someone to do something. And he said, do it now and date it yesterday. And so I've often thought about that. The thought here, it's as good as done. And so the past is used, but it's what we call a prophetic use of the past, of the perfect in Hebrew. And I think the same is being done in the Greek here. Furthermore, the hungry, uh, he is filled with good things and the rich, he is sent away empty, Psalm 107. And I think of the rich man and Lazarus in Luke where we see this carried out. And so she is predicting really what would happen in the ministry of our Lord and Luke captures that and goes back to this Magnificat. Furthermore, he has helped Israel, his servant, and that he might remember mercy. This is a reference to Isaiah 41, verses 8 and 9. In other words, he's helping Israel, his servant, in that he's responded to what he had promised to Israel, that there would be a Messiah and that there would be a forerunner to announce him. And he goes on, as he spoke unto our fathers, toward Abraham and his seed forever. 
and our mind goes back to Genesis chapter 17, verse 7, and Micah 7, 20, where the Lord in Genesis, even in 12, 3, says, in you, all families of the earth will be blessed. And so this Magnificat is full of these Old Testament promises to Abraham. And so we're told after that beautiful, uh, can I say, magnificent, ma ma magnif Magnificat of Mary, Mary then abode with her about three months and then returned unto her house. This is followed then after the Magnificat of Mary by the next event, and that is the birth and childhood of John the Baptist and his desert life. We're told in verse 57 of Luke, and this goes from 57 through verse 80. Now Elizabeth's time was fulfilled that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her kinsfolk heard that the Lord had magnified his mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child. And they would have called him Zacharias after the name of his father. But his mother answered and, and said, not so, but he shall be called John, Yohanan. And by the way, Yohanes, in the Hebrew, the Lord is gracious from Hanan and Yah. And so we see the uh, Yah being a shortened form of yod heh vav -He, uh, Yahweh. And so we see God's graciousness. She names him by the Holy Spirit. And they said to her, there is none of your kindred that is called by that name. And they made signs to his father that he would have called him as to what he would have called him. And he asked for a writing tablet since he could not speak yet and wrote, his name is John. Uh, so again, we're seeing the miracle of the Lord here, even in the naming of John, the forerunner of our Lord. And they marveled, they all marveled, and his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, blessing God. So now Zacharias is going to speak. And fear came on all that dwelt around about them, and all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all that heard them then laid them up in their heart saying, what then shall this child be? For the hand of the Lord was upon him. Speaking of John the Baptist. Now at this point, his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and he then prophesied. And so we're now looking at another uh, prophecy that is similar to the Magnificat about the work and ministry of John the Baptist. Again, full of Old Testament passages. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has visited and brought redemption for his people. And here we have an allusion to this from Psalm 72, verse 18, and Psalm 111, verse 9. And he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of David. We see this in 1 Samuel chapter 2, the reference in Psalm 18, verse 3. It's interesting, the horn of salvation looks at the power of salvation that ultimately would come through the Messiah that John is going to be introducing. And one of the things that's interesting to me in Pirkei Avot, the saying of the fathers, we have a reference to the horn of salvation that the Lord would bring to the house of David or through the Messiah uh, when he would come. And I think John, having meditated on that, probably during this time of his inability to speak, now suddenly opens his mouth and it comes out. 
uh, this is, if my memory serves me correctly, in Pirkei Avot, which is a part of the Mishnah, and uh, it's, I think it's in the sixth uh, chapter, where the horn of salvation is spoken of that the Lord would bring uh, to Israel. And we're seeing this now, I believe, in this great uh, prophecy of Zechariah. As he spoke by the mouth of the holy prophets, which had uh, been since the world began, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. This is a reference to Psalm 106, verse 10. And again, it's looking at God's judgment. And I think as we look at the Gospel of Luke, uh, the enemies here has to do with sin, with evil, uh, with what the Lord Jesus Christ would bring through the forerunner's uh, pre preparation of him and to show mercy towards our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Going back again, notice to the Abrahamic covenant, the oath which he swore to Abraham, our father. And by the way, we see that oath to Abraham, not only in a blood covenant of Genesis chapter 15, but also in 17, seven, uh, where he tells him, if you can count the stars, that's how great your seed will be and promising that he would create this through his seed. And it is interesting in 12.3 of Genesis, in you, all families of the earth will be blessed. And this has its ultimate application in Jesus Christ. We see this, for example, in Galatians 3, where Paul We'll talk about that same reality. So there's further reference here about being faithful to the oath of Abraham. We see it in Leviticus 26, 42, Psalm 105, verse 8, and Micah 7, 20. And so again, full of the Hebrew Bible, Zacharias is giving this prophetic word that the oath which God swore to Abraham would be fulfilled in the forerunner announcing the Messiah, announcing Jesus, to grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, should serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And I think as we look at the New Testament, and especially the book of Luke, again, the deliverance from the hand of enemies is looking at Christ's victory over sin, over death, over faith, Satan, over the demons, and so forth, in the way that Luke uh, develops his gospel. And furthermore, in holiness and righteousness, we should live before him all our days. What a challenge to us today to fulfill that by seeking to live a holy life. And then he goes on, yay, uh, yes, and you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you shall go before the face of the Lord to make ready his ways. This is a reference back to Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, where uh, Elijah would go before the messenger of the Lord. And Jesus, in Matthew 17, will say, Elijah has come in John the Baptist, and yet is yet to come futuristically as well. So as we move on in this prophecy, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people in the remission of their sins. And that's another theme that we'll, be, that we'll see reiterated over and over in the uh, Gospel of Luke, where the Lord gives the knowledge of what salvation is really about unto his people those that are willing to believe, whether Jew or Gentile, in the remission of their sins. And certainly, Jesus is the one who's able to remit sins because of his death and the new covenant. And that'll be something that will be developed in Luke chapter 22, where Jesus says, this is the blood of the new covenant. Again, 
a fulfillment of all of these Old Testament covenants, the Abrahamic, the Davidic, the new. And furthermore, because of the tender mercy of our God, wherefore the day spring from on high shall visit us. And again, where there's a reference back to Malachi chapter four, verse two, to shine upon them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. And my mind goes also uh, to Jesus again, prophesied in Isaiah chapter nine, where the same language is used. Those that are sitting in darkness in the shadow of death, the beautiful thing is a child has been born to us and the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Tele, Yoetz, El Gibor, Aviad, Sar Shalom. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of his kingdom there shall be no end to sit upon David's throne forever. So he is to guide our feet into the way of peace. And we're told, and the child grew and became strong in spirit and was in the desert till the days uh, till the day of his showing unto Israel. So this is a beautiful section that we've looked at, looking at the and not only the Annunciation of the birth to uh, John the Baptist, but furthermore, the Annunciation of the virgin birth to Mary, her visit to Elizabeth. But then in this particular video, focusing on the Magnificat of Mary, and how beautiful uh, she looks forward to what the Lord is going to do in exalting the humble and putting down the arrogant. And then we have the birth of John the Baptist and the prophecy of Zacharias calling him, first of all, John, uh, Yahweh is gracious, and the beautiful prophecy as to how a horn of salvation is going to come forth in the house of David, and the Lord's going to give victory over enemies, and I'm seeing that as spiritual enemies, uh, sin, Satan, demons, etc., and over and then to not only deliver us, but to bring us into a holy life, and uh, John then would be the child that would go before and prepare the way of the Lord in light of the fulfillment of Malachi chapter 4, and the Lord would take us out of the darkness and bring us into light because he is the God man, a child that has been born, that's going to direct, we're told, uh, all those who are willing to believe in him in the way of peace. And so it's a powerful section here. And John now is in the desert looking forward to becoming that forerunner.